Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Kishore from Tested. So we're here at Comic-Con 2019, and one of the cool things is actually off-site in San Diego is the Comic-Con Museum pop-up. We're in Balboa Park, the site of the future Comic-Con Museum, and they've done a pop-up to celebrate Batman's 80th anniversary. Yeah, this is a museum that's going to be opening in 2021, but this gives us a good sense of kind of what they want to show, from some interesting fan fashion to history of collectibles. Behind us, we have all 100 of the Batman Black and White Anthology series figures. They have comic book covers from over the years, a lot of Mondo prints that we really adore. And what we're really here for, though, are props and costumes, because they've brought that some stuff out from the Warner Archive, including costumes from the first series of Batman films. We're talking about 1989 all the way to the George Clooney ones. Let's see them up close and personal and some really interesting props we've never seen before. So let's go check it out. Okay, our first stop is, of course, the costumes. And what's really striking to me is the condition that these costumes are in because I've seen some of the pieces like from Batman Returns that have gone on auction and have gone for restoration. And I know for a fact that Ironhead Studio, who is Jose Fernandez, who worked on the original costumes, was brought in and his team did some restoration. So this is, is unbelievable it, condition. Was it rubber and it just deteriorated over so time? They were so deteriorated over time. Um, and so this is just well preserved. It looks so good. And we're gonna check it out starting with the Michael Keaton Batman. Sure, do you remember watching this in theaters? I do remember watching it. It was one of the first movies I think I saw in the theaters uh, as, as a teenager. I'm just, I'm really struck at the Batman Returns being so simple. It well, has a few sort of layers to it, um, but it, it wasn't a huge iteration from the original Batman to now. Oh, it's I mean, really the, the logo. The I two, think. yeah, the two things I remember distinctly about the first costume was the emblem having those extra points, and I was like. That wasn't what it looked like in the comics. And then Batman Returns, which I loved, had the more armored ab plates, uh, even though it was all still foam mm -hmm. latex rubber. You could tell something that they did early was it was only covering just the front. Like the, the armor didn't go around the edge. That was a key plot point in the movie when Catwoman <laughs> gets him. So like it, they actually worked it into the story. Wow. Uh, I do like the iconic yellow and the the cowl that comes down like deep into his chest. Uh, and then just watching the evolution from there to the Val Kilmer suit is huge. Oh yeah. The Val Kilmer suit, you have full cod piece. You have the logo now on the belt mm -hmm. and wide across the chest. You have the elongated logo. Uh, it's futuristic. Yeah, and also the clasp for the cape, yeah. right? They're not hiding the cape underneath the cowl. I think that's one of the hardest things to do is how do you blend mm -hmm. the cape with the cowl? Batman, as artists drew in the comics, it would be one piece, but it's not a practical thing to do. Uh, of course, you have Batman and Robin. These are all, I think, uh, sculpted by Jose Fernandez. Of course, Joel Schumacher's intent for this was to make it maybe a little more inspired by Roman armor. That's why you mm -hmm. had the famous bat nipples. Uh, but next to Batman and Robin, you got Terry English's Mr. Freeze armor. The Mr. Freeze armor is kind of usurped by how that character played, but I love the the lighting inside of the armor piece. It it's so incredibly brilliant, like backlighting his head. Yeah. It's already kind of a brilliant silver on top of it. Oh, I, yeah. I actually really adore this costume. Totally. And it's all hammered, hammered aluminum. He, Terry English hammered this oh, yeah. all together. Wow. I love how they've laid out some of these costumes, like especially the Schwarzenegger, uh, Mr. Freeze, and now the Poison Ivy with mannequins that look like the actors. It's a little bit striking. Oh, these are suits not from the films, but actually from the Gotham TV show. Uh, I actually, I really like I this Scarecrow this, totally. outfit, um, partially because it's just sort of thrown together. Yeah, all uh, the layering. It, you yeah. see sort of the mania embedded in his character and just how they threw together burlap sacks and, you know, tattered uh, leather pieces, uh, a mask that doesn't totally uh, fit to, to face shape. That's probably the closest Scarecrow I know we had. the. Uh, the Killian Murphy Scarecrow in the Nolan films, but 
never a scene like this. And this is the Batman suit that we see towards the end of the Gotham run. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little different for sure. Yeah, but it's supposed to be an early iteration of his suit because he's just becoming Batman at that point. Uh, and as that, you can see that cowl is barely a cowl. It has like a chin strap on it. Right. Um, so I think it kind of fits from that perspective. The cape was really divisive, I remember, just because it was two different material types. Mm. Uh, but it looks more like a layered armor piece than it does a Batman suit. Kishore, it's the Batmobile. Yeah, I know. It's the car <laughs> I've always wanted in my life. My entire life, I've wanted this car. I've only had it in... Hot Wheels form, never had it in Power Wheels form because that one only had a one seat. I couldn't share it. Uh, but of course, this is the uh, Anton first design of the Batmobile for both original Batman 1989 and also Batman Returns. We're just remarking that you know, even though it is like a mid, a late 80s, early 90s interpretation and very consistent with all the color scheme, all black of the Tim Burton Batmans, it has it takes a lot of influence from what at that time were people's most recent you know, Batman memory, which was 1966, Adam West Batmans. Yeah, my brother had a die-cast 1966 uh, Batmobile, and it had the wings off the back yep. and like the afterburner jet off the back. Yeah. And you can kind of see that reflected in the design here. I thought this was the coolest car ever made. Totally. It's so over the top, but now seeing it up close, you see all these details that you never thought would exist. Like, there's a gas cap. There's like places where guns emerge off the off the front panel lines where the grappling hook would come out. Where yes, there were machine guns that pop off the top. And the thing that was set, or the precedent that was set with this design, I think, was the elongated front. So after this, you have the Batman animated series Batmobile, which I think more Art Deco style. Your favorite Batmobile, I think, mm -hmm. and that one took influence from here, having a very long front, very small cockpit. Uh, I don't think this one actually articulates. It's from the Warner Brothers archive, but. Uh, just to see its imposing size is pretty awesome. And of course, you have just the iconography of Batman, the Batman symbol right on the hubs there. Completely unnecessary if you're a crime fighter, but it was a movie. This is where we started to get Batman symbol everywhere oh, on yeah. every, that we see in later movies. Yeah. Eh, not bad for a hubcap, though. I've not seen bad. worse. Uh, even cooler, though, I think something I've never seen in person is what's something next to it. Right over there, it's the Penguin's rubber duck. This is truly spectacular. It's so cool. It is super cool. It's the Penguin's duck ride, of course, at the end of Batman Returns. Where he just pops out of the sewer, just mm -hmm. explodes out of it in this giant duck. Yep, yep. And there's a, of course, there's a scissor lift mechanism. What's cool is also they have the concept art next to it, which shows that the scissor lift design was also really colorful. It's all, yeah. of course, based on the circus that the Penguin recruits. There's the, the, even the steering wheel here is this like red and white type kind of carnival type feel to it. Uh, I love how worn it is. It's just kind of rough around the edges. Inside, it's all nicked up. That's exactly kind of what you would expect. It's from living in the sewer. Yeah, a duck so that emerges from the sewer is not going to be all nice and shiny. But even then, the color is vibrant. That airbrushing mm -hmm. work, it's not a flat tone. It has dimensionality. This is amazing. So this is like my childhood memory. Just seeing this, I can, I can hear Danny DeVito in behind us right now. I can hear Just the like robot cackling. penguins yeah. running around. Yeah. I think Speaking over of there. the robot penguins, they're over there. They look great. Yeah, yeah. They were such a ridiculous touch when I saw an army of robot penguins emerge yeah. in that movie. Uh, but I seeing don't... like penguins like mocked up over there with like rockets on their back, it's kind of endearing now. Pretty divisive. Yeah. Back then, you know, kind of like the, the Ewoks of the first Batman films, but even reference in the, in the most recent uh, Batman films, it's, it's something that we can look fondly back in the past as one of the, the things that was part of movie history.